It turns out I have a whole bunch of random things sitting around maturating in glass jars and barrels. It's about time that I finally go through the whole lot, do a stock take, see where everything's at. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and today I'm doing a stock take on all the random things that I've got sitting around the distillery. Turns out I distill a lot more product than I ever drink, and I have a tendency to always want to see what's going to happen if it just sits a little bit longer. <laughs> and that means I've got a whole bunch of stuff sitting around here, uh, and honestly, a bunch of it, I, I've got no idea what's happening with it. So, I need to do a stock take, I need to figure out exactly where everything is at. What needs to happen to it? Do I need to just bottle it? Is it past good? It just needs to go into the faints jar or be turned into weed killer. Uh, or does it just need to chill and have a little bit more age on it? I would planned on doing a video to catch you guys up with all of this, uh, but a very quick count around the shed uh, has me at 75 jars. And I'm pretty sure I haven't counted everything. This isn't gonna happen in one video. I'm not capable of tasting 75 things in a day, I do not think. Uh, so I thought I would put part one up as a video. If you guys enjoy this video, give it a like, tell me in the comments you want to see the rest. If it looks like it's interesting to you, I will make part two, maybe part three, so we can get through absolutely everything. Anyway, let's get to tasting. First of all, uh, I want to get into tasting some of these little jars. Most of the time, uh, whoops, these are little tests that I've sort of ran in the past and I just held on to. Eh, time for a new syringe. Uh, none of them have great lids, so I'm a little bit dubious about that, but at the very least I may as well taste it and see if I can learn anything from the situation, right? Uh, this is the Mama Juana. And I have a sneaky suspicion that this is going to be insanely uh, acrid and bitter because there's a buttload of stuff sitting in there and it's been in there for a long ass time. But, wow. It smells amazing. Yeah. So it, it actually tastes amazing. It's a mix of like kind of fruity, spicy, woody, all sorts of delicious things, but it's just way overly acrid. I have a dump bucket. You know what, I think I need some water as well to uh, rinse glasses and more importantly, my palate. Hold on. All right, glass rinsed. Me rinsed. So there's two options for stuff that's not worth keeping. One is I could just chuck it out. Uh, two is I can throw it into the faints jar and then turn it into something later on. At the very least, maybe it's going to turn into like a vodka, right? This I'm kind of torn about because there's a lot of interesting flavors in there. Am I really going to utilize that? The, the volume's not worth keeping, right? Like, there's almost nothing in there. And I've got a lot of this stuff sitting around. <laughs> I've already got 30 liters of faints in the faints jar. Um, you know what? I'll keep that because maybe, just maybe, those faints turn into something that isn't, isn't just uh, vodka. And that could be pretty good. All right, so here is the issue with these lids. They corrode uh, and all of that crap goes into your uh, spirit, which you do not want. Um, so like I said, I use these specifically only for little short tests and then they've just, wow, I'm gonna have to wash that off my hands or it's gonna mess everything up. Um, little short tests, do not let them sit around for ages and then use the product. Uh, I am going to taste this just out of interest sake, but I'm going to chuck it afterwards. That's actually really damn good. That is really good. Slightly over oaked, but very complex, very fruity. This says AG2, 60%. Great note keeping, Jesse. I've got no idea what that is. If I had to guess, I think it was when I was doing the yeast test, uh, and this was a uh, like a sous vide heat treatment for about 24 hours just to test it. Uh, that is going in the bin. These jars are a little bit better. You know what, actually, let me wash my hands so I'm not tasting freaking metal. 11 grams of staves. I remember writing this out. I don't remember exactly what the... Uh, function of the test was, to be honest with you. Uh, as you can see, these lids hold up a little bit better, so I trust them a little bit more. 
but it has that very interesting sappy sweet corn almost through to apple almost kind of like marzipan or sweet and sour thing going on that's really freaking interesting uh, and from memory, I think part of the reason I kept this around is that I wanted to test the idea of doing a heat treatment on a spirit to get it kind of started and then let it sit for a decent amount of time to see if, if that heat treatment will kind of jumpstart the aging process. And I, I kind of got to say... I kind of feel like that's working. It has that really big, chunky oak characteristic in it, but it's not overly oaked. It's more the the body and the flavor coming through, not, you know, not being acrid or overly spicy or anything like that. Um, so you know what? I'm actually going to keep this one. Uh, hmm, I need to organize things here. All right, so that's keeping. Once again, I'm not going to drink it. I'm not going to blend it. I'm just going to taste it, maybe every now and again, just out of interest sake. Rinse. Repeat. Now this one has got citric acid written on the top. And uh, this was one of the little tests I did to see uh, if the theory of adding a little bit of acid in will help the esterification process over time. Essentially, we're adding in acid as a precursor for esterification uh, and citric acid. Do we get citric acid? I guess if we use citrus. I can't think, I don't think anything actually creates citric acid, right? So we might create some different esters in here that we don't normally get. Uh, but I think we have one with uh, vinegar as well, yeah. So you may notice that this has gone cloudy and there's kind of almost like a powdery, weird stuff sitting on the bottom. It's really hard to see on camera, uh, but this happens sometimes to things that sit around for a long time. And I wonder, I'm just gonna check the proof. It tastes horrible though, by the way. <laughs> really bad. 52%, uh, so no, it's not the ABV. Uh, maybe, maybe. I cooked it a little bit hot, because I did a heat treatment on this as well. Uh, I Honestly, I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, does anyone want to chip in with ideas? Because I would be very interested to hear from you. This is good for nothing, so I'm getting rid of that. Vinegar one has done the same thing. So actually, let me come up there and I'll show you. Uh, it's so hard to see on camera, but can you see like this kind of almost like, I don't know, it almost looks like a, a fungal growth or something, but I don't think it is. And then when you stir it up, it's gonna go super freaking cloudy. It almost only ever happens on little test jars that I do like this, or something where I've left, maybe it's too much oxidization when I leave way too much headspace compared to the liquid, I don't know. Both of these have interesting, I'm not even gonna bother tasting this because I know it's gonna taste like crap. Both of them do, though, have quite interesting fruity noses and I, I can't place, I can't quite place exactly what those aromas are. They're a little bit different. So maybe there is something uh, to using vinegar and or citric acid. But once again, that's going in the dump pile. Yay, I'm getting some space back around my workshop. <laughs> this one is just white spirit. from the uh, pumpkin spiced, or spiced pumpkin whiskey I made some time ago. Actually, I'm gonna use this as an excuse to rinse that out. Wow, that is a lot of nutmeg and cinnamon. There's nothing inherently bad with this, like it's actually kinda, it is kind of interesting, but it's a tiny little volume, and um, I don't think it's gonna do anything good. Actually, no, maybe it will. Because that little, like, this is full of spice, but that might add just a little bit of something interesting in with everything else. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that for now. Let's move on to something a little bit more serious, which is the love child, which is sitting here in this barrel. And 
that tap is sketchy as hell. I'm not going to touch it because I'm afraid it's going to break off. <laughs> Instead, uh, let me, I'm just going to steal some out of the top here. So this has been doing an interesting thing where there's this weird vegetably, almost like, yeah, almost like vegetable stock, kind of umami savory flavor that pops up in it. And I've noticed as the temperature gets colder, the savory flavor comes out more. As the temperature warms up, the savory flavor disappears more. Uh, and I tasted it going into winter, uh, a little, actually a little bit into winter, and that flavor had peaked up again. It's just starting to sort of warm up a little bit more around here. So I'm very interested to taste this now. You know what? I think I need a little bit more of that. Whoops. The aroma is pretty good. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is kind of like a rum and a bourbon smushed together. It was a corn mash with molasses added into it and it's in a French oak barrel. Interestingly enough, that umami kind of character has, I think, dropped off again. Um, it is starting to get, it's starting to get almost a little bit astringent. Honestly, I think at the moment it's fine, uh, but I'm going to have to keep an eye on this because I don't think it's going to make it through summer. And I think I'm going to have to pull it sometime soon. So I'm glad I tasted it. Let's move on to the next thing, which is, what have I got? This is a grappa made from pressed grapes and the lees. So kind of the, like the, um, the more soupy, <laughs> yeasty stuff at the bottom of the fermenter. Uh, and this one was distilled, proofed down, and just had oak put into it. So I've also got versions of this with uh, wine blended back into it and aged or not aged, so on and so forth. But this is the gold one. Ooh. That nose is delicious. Man, I am so into that. Um, I haven't tasted this in ages. <sighs> what is it? The interesting grappa-like flavor of grape skins and grape stems and just kind of that real intense um, I, grappa flavor. I don't know how else to describe it. Has mellowed a little bit. It's still there in a big way, which is awesome because I love that flavor. Uh, but now it's starting to mingle with all of the beautiful things the oak's doing. So I'm getting a little bit of vanilla. And interestingly enough, I don't know whether it's that or if it's esterification, but it's almost bringing it back to be more like an interesting fresh fruit characteristic, which is... The nose on that is awesome. Okay. The palette's good. It's almost a little musty though, so I'd be interested to see. I wonder if the ABV has dropped a little low on this. Yeah, so we're down to 49% ABV, which is heading on the low side for what I would like this to be. It has a similar flavor to the nose, which is awesome. And it's starting to get a little bit of a bite on the back end in terms of spice and borderline astringency. Interestingly though, the heat, the, the like just the headsiness of this has finally mellowed out. So I'm gonna say this needs to be bottled ASAP. I'm gonna put this over here so I can do so. Rye whiskey, 60% rye. Uh, corn and malted barley it went in here at 50%, 56% ABV. Ooh, interesting. Uh, so this, this one got quite funky for a little while. Uh, and I haven't tasted it in a long time. It got almost, uh, not blue cheese, more, probably more like Parmesan rind kind of thing going on. It was a little bit like almost sweaty, but not quite sweaty. Um, a little bit pungent's not the right word. Not Parmesan cheese, like the like smelling the outside of the rind of Parmesan cheese is kind of where it was headed. Oh, it still has that. Yeah, it still has it. 
It also has a really cool rye scent to it now as well, though. Which is funny. That I mean, there was a little bit of that at the beginning, but it's, I, I think, I mean, this is all from memory. I think that's come out more. Oh, wow. That is exactly what I expected for three quarts of the way through the tasting process. And then suddenly, bam, it's like mochaccino. Like chocolate, sweet chocolate and coffee with the rye almost dill-like pickle thing going on. Actually, a little bit of sourness as well. A little bit of acidity. That's... That's kind of fun. Once again, let's test the, the, the proof because it feels like it's drinking down at like 45% ABV. Hmm, 52% still. I'll be happy to let this ride for a bit. All right, I'm going to put this in the let, the ride, let it ride pile. <laughs> Tennessee whiskey that I made on the claw hammer setup. Um, so this was charcoal filtered, which is very abnormal for me to do. Uh, let's give it a nudge. Okay, so this legitimately is starting to smell like a Tennessee whiskey. When did I put this down? This was from the end of March, so it's had a decent amount of time to age, not heaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let this one ride too, because that is that's getting pretty damn close to that kind of Tennessee style whiskey thing going on. Very, very restrained on all of the the grain based flavors. It's mostly wood flavor with a little bit of extra stuff. But the wood, I can't remember exactly what Muppet, I didn't write what char I put in there. Uh, but the char's nailed it. It has that kind of caramelly, oaky sweetness along with some vanilla a little bit of kind of the almondy thing going on, and a little bit of barrel spice as well. Uh, so that one, that one's shaping up. I mean, it's not my style of whiskey, but I'm impressed that I hit what I was trying to make with it. Does that make sense? So uh, that goes on the Let It Ride shelf. All right, this is 100% corn. Uh, it is the same, exactly the same batch that I have in one of the Bad Mo Barrels, and I'll taste that in one of the other videos I make like this. Uh, but I poached a bunch of this relatively recently to do the blending with Manuka and mostly the New Zealand peat. I pinched a little bit of it uh, because I was really interested to see what would happen with kind of like a traditional bourbon, a little bit more on the Texas sort of style bourbon, um, blended with New Zealand peat. I thought that would be really fun. Uh, so this is, something needs to happen to this. It can't sit in this jar any longer like this. That's just silly. Uh, but let's have a taste and see where it's at. Is it even worth keeping? Oh yeah, it's worth keeping. Definitely worth keeping. Actually, I think I have a plan. I have a sneaky plan. You know what? I was gonna say I was gonna throw all the liquid from these test jars into this and just keep the oak in it to bump the volume up. But I've, I think I've reneged on that because these, these are the same batch as this, but fermented with different yeasts. So this is an English ale yeast, a Belgian ale yeast, AG2, and I've got AM1 uh, over there as well. You know what? I think it's worth more to me to keep these separate and let these age for a little bit longer to really see the differences between yeast. So I take that back, I'm putting these away. <laughs> and I'm getting no adverse effects from this as is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this in the letter ride pile, but what I'm gonna do is find a, um, a smaller jar for it. Irish pot still went into here at 60% ABV. I've done a horrible job of telling you how old each of these are. I've just realized that should have been the most important metric. What I will do in post while I'm editing is put it all up on the screen. And editing Jesse is gonna hate me for that. But, um, you know, that's future Jesse's problem. Current Jesse is uh, 
almost got a nice little buzz on here, so he doesn't care. <laughs> Ooh. Yep, this one's gonna be interesting. Okay, so here's the thing that's interesting. Real interesting, starting to get a little bit of fruit characteristic on the nose. More than that, it has that real kind of like butter, shortbread, cookie smell that you get in a lot of Irish pot stilled whiskies. I'm not getting anything crazy like a red breast 12 in terms of like real big, deep, dark red fruits, plums and dates and stuff like that. I'm also not getting anything kind of on the green spot side like coconut, no green apple, uh, but, but it does have that real interesting base for Irish pot still whiskey. And the few times I've tasted this, there's a lot of flavors that pop up and then disappear and then pop up and then disappear. Uh, so, I haven't given up hope for any of those real interesting fruit characteristics yet. Uh, but what is happening, I think, is I've got way, like I've got a lot of oak in there. And it's just starting to get a hint of, it's, it's starting to get a little bit heavy on the cinnamon clove side of things. This was second use oak, but I think what I need to do is split this down probably into thirds and just put a third of the oak back in. So actually, you know what, I'm just gonna do that right now. Let me get some tongs, a hammer, and a chisel. I will be right back. Let's get you out of there. You know what, actually, now that I say this, I think the plan was to try and get this to age relatively quickly, and that's why I had so much oak in there. All right, we're going back in with uh, probably even less than a quarter of what was in there to start with. And that, once again, is going on the Let It Ride shelf. Weird free rum. Uh, this was a video I made uh, reusing, I think I just added sugar back into the dunder. Man, I can't even remember. Um, editing Jesse helped me out here, what the hell did I do? Uh, it kind of worked, I remember that from memory. And it was kind of a little bit weird and I was hoping that aging would help it along. Let's see. Honestly, it smells mostly like oak and not a whole lot like rum. <laughs> There's not, I mean, I'm never gonna drink this. I'm never gonna drink it and I don't see there being any kind of interest factor from what happens to it as it gets older. So that is, it's not bad. It tastes slightly like rum. It tastes like, a, tastes like rum if you treated it like a Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> It's not bad, it's just meh. I'm not gonna drink it. So um, we'll put that into faints and I'll get a jar back because I always need more glass. This is the Par Cooked Apple Moonshine. Uh, I made three versions, I think. They were all like community sort of inspired recipes uh, of apple pie moonshine. Uh, I made that a long ass time ago. And I'll be honest with you, like, this is not the sort of thing that I think of in terms of, hey, I feel like a drink, I'll go find that thing. So it's just kind of sat there. Doesn't have oak in it, it's just been chilling. Um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know, let's uh, give it a nudge. Whoa, that nose is amazing. Okay, it straight up smells like apple pie. Actually, I take that back. I don't know apple pie that well. I'm not American, it's not something we have very often. What I do know is apple crumble. It's very, very, very similar to apple crumble. So stewed apples with cinnamons, maybe clo with cinnamon, maybe cloves, probably nutmeg. It, it doesn't smell like alcohol. It smells like that pie. Wow, it even has the kind of like biscuity, uh, crumbly part to it. Okay, that is, um, so much better than I remember it being. Is that because I've just had some time to separate from it and I haven't tasted it in a while? Is that because letting it chill and mingle and meld like this has actually made it better? I don't know. Um, really interesting slight fruit tartness to it. All of the spices are coming through. I gotta bottle that, I have to bottle it. <laughs> I'm gonna need to strain it though. Uh, I'm assuming there's some I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm guessing it came from the apple. There's like a, kind of like a gelatiny goop on the bottom. But um, yeah, that is definitely getting bottled. Bottling shelf, where are you? 
And last, but definitely not least for this video, is the, this is the one I've been really looking forward to trying, uh, Isla Scotch. I had uh, a Bad Mo barrel filled with what I was trying to turn into an Isla style scotch, uh, and it was only part full. So what I did is tasted it, decided what it was lacking, and then tried to make a mash that would compensate for that to, to blend back into that barrel and fill the barrel back up. This is what was left over from that. So, you know what, I'm just gonna waste a little bit to get the apple pie out of the syringe. I'll be real with you team, this is the one I've been really looking forward to tasting because I haven't tasted it in a long time. Uh, and this is, this is the sort of thing that I really enjoy drinking. So I'm hoping this is gonna turn into something delicious. Mmm. I need more of this. This is the last one I'm gonna taste, so I'm gonna go and enjoy this. Probably let Aaron taste it, and then get on to editing this video. I'm gonna take a little more with me. <laughs> peat up front, but not crazy peat. I bet putting a couple of drops of water in there would make it crazy peat. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, on the nose, soft, almost like pear-like fruit, sitting in behind the peat. Like a, a kind of a Danish style pastry glaze sweetness to it as well. On the palate, buttloads of peat, heaps of peat. In fact, I would say probably more peat than like a Laphroaig 10. Uh, it is getting a little bit of that fruity characteristic on the palate, but it's still all just a little bit rough. I think it needs more time to just kind of like all the flavors need to come together more and meld. I think we could also do with a little bit more of that wood sweetness in the second use oak. Yep, second use staves. And I think just a little bit more overall complexity, a little bit more mouthfeel, won't hurt it either. So I could see this one going for another year, easily. I could also see myself just drinking it as it is now, but I'm gonna let this ride for a little while. So, a huge, huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you, Patreons, for being the people that support us day in, month out. Thoroughly freaking appreciate it. And honestly, uh, it's because of you guys that I get to make videos like this. I've got no idea whether people are gonna to wanna to watch this video. Uh, and if I was stressing about paying the bills purely on YouTube metrics, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this. So thank you guys. And saying that, maybe you don't wanna watch this kind of video. Maybe you do. If you do, let me know, and I'll make part two, and let's be honest, probably part three, to finish out going through all of the different spirits that are in the shed. If you don't wanna see videos like this, then uh, chances are you're not watching this, and you're not gonna do anything about it, and I will know what that means. <laughs> cool. I've got some bottling to do. Uh, I've got some reorganizing to do. I'm gonna get onto that, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.